Rick Wilson is a former Republican strategist and co-founder of the Lincoln Project, a political action committee which is dedicated to prevent Donald Trump's re-election. Rick, good seeing you again. Good morning, Inez. How are you? Rick, all the charges against Donald Trump don't seem to hurt him. Rather the opposite. Give me an explanation. The, the charges against Trump don't resonate simply because the Republican base voter lives in an alternate media reality. They, they, they believe what's on Fox and what's on Facebook and not what's in the real world. Do you see any possibility to reach them? You know, I've spent the last eight years trying to confront Republicans with the truth. I've written two books about it. I've talked about it in, in hundreds of interviews and speeches to try to make sure they understand what's really happening. And the illusion of what's happening in their heads is vastly different from the reality. And they, the, it, is, it is nearly impossible to separate the, the hardcore MAGA voter from Trump. So it's basically coming down to where people uh, uh, get their information from. It really is. And unfortunately, the, on the right in America, there is a enormously sophisticated and enormously consequential um, media machine that is designed from the ground up to hold these um, these hardcore Republican voters in a sort of bubble and not let conflicting information enter that bubble. Mm -hmm. And so because of the that that hermetically sealed bubble that they live in, in, in from in terms of information and media, um, they find it very easy to just go along with whatever they see that day on Fox or whatever they see that day on their Facebook feeds or on their social media feeds on Twitter or wherever. Um, and and to believe in things that are that are empirically untrue, but are politically persuasive. Well, but the Republican Party is bigger and more than the MAGA supporters. It is, but the MAGA supporters will be the people who elect the president in the Republican primary. Um, the kind of persuadable voters that I've been very good at reaching. They represent between 7 and 11 percent of the Republican voter pool overall. Now, in the general election, when it's Trump versus Biden, that will be a very important group of people to uh, persuade and motivate, which is what my organization is working to do. But it's also a very difficult uh, task that you can't you can't look at it lightly. You can't say, oh, this will be easy because there is an instinct among Republicans to always uh, return to the nest. Rick, do you think there is anything which would stop these Trump hardcore supporters, for example, if he would be in prison during the nomination process of the primaries? I will tell you honestly, even Trump being in prison will not stop them from naming him as the Republican nominee. Even Trump being in prison will not make the majority of Republicans reconsider their allegiance to him. And, and that is a frightening thing in a democracy where you say, oh, the guy who's going to jail on, by the end of this week, it'll be over 100 felony charges, is still an acceptable leader. But they really believe he's still not only an acceptable leader, but the best possible leader. What does all this mean for the future of the GOP, the Republican Party? The future of the GOP is that it has reduced itself now into a personality cult um, with a authoritarian and statist uh, orientation politically. It's post policy, uh, and I think in the long haul, you know, Trump will be with us for some time, and Trump imitators will be with us for some time. Um, but they have alienated the vast majority of the country, um, and they they have become more and more extremist in their policies and their beliefs and their programs such as they are, um, and, they're, and they are almost all driven underneath by a sort of ethnic animus and hatred of immigrants, of minority groups, of people who aren't the same sort of white Christian nationalists that they all believe that the country should emulate. It sounds as if there would be no way out. Donald Trump, if he's beaten at a, at a spectacular level in the 2024 election, if he is beaten so badly that if he's beaten so badly that even his own diehard fans say, maybe this isn't working for us, you might find a at least a plurality inside the party that would decide, OK, we got to get away from this. We can't we can't keep playing this game. Um, we, we've got to get away from this guy. But that is still a long way off. And and American elections are are going to be closely decided 
The electoral college system in the U.S. makes makes it certain that it will be a very close run uh, thing. Even if Joe Biden wins, it's going to be a tight win. It's not going to be so decisive, you know, at least at this moment. I'm hopeful. I'm going to work to make it the biggest win we can and work to split the vote as much as possible, because that's the only way that that people who believe in a center right party will ever see one again. Because the Republican Party today is not a conservative party in the traditional sense. It's a radical party based on authoritarianism and statism. So, Rick, tell me, if Donald Trump would get very sick or would die, uh, is there anybody like a possible uh, successor of his right now in the party? It would be a very busy and ugly moment. There would be, uh, you would see people come out of the woodwork in every single element of the party. You would see people from every conceivable uh, governors, senators, members of Congress. All of them would all vie for the mantle of Trump. You would see his children come out and run for office. They would all be fighting for the mantle of Trump. They would all be trying to climb up this very large, greasy pyramid of power uh, very quickly to to take on the mantle of Trump and Trumpism. Like many authoritarians, it's hard to pass it on to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do a succession plan when your grip on power is based on fear and intimidation mm -hmm. and on a cult-like obedience to one person. The only near parallel would be in North Korea, um, where the where the where the Kim family has passed power down through three generations of authoritarians. But that is a very different, um, a very different sort of political climate than in the U.S. And what about Ron DeSantis, the Floridian governor? No chance. His campaign is in free fall. Um, he was the great hope with many of the establishment Republicans. But, you know, political campaigns take talent, not just money. And he doesn't he had all the money in the world, but none of the talent. So, Rick, do you fear violence uh, if Donald Trump were to be imprisoned? Look, we're a long way from a sentencing of Trump that would send him to prison, um, but it, I deeply fear violence if that's the case. If if you thought that January 6th was bad, I think these people will look at um, Trump facing justice and accountability as something that will justify any level of violence to, to free him um, in that case. And I, I think that should concern and frankly terrify most Americans. Rick, as for now, it seems absolutely possible that Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States, picked by the Americans in a democratic process. What will happen to this country? If he is elected president, he will just kill off the federal investigations and the charges. He'll just stop them. They will, they will end right then and there. The state stuff is still going to hang out there. But at that point, you know, I, I, I think that the consequential nature of of the federal charges being erased um, would 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 end the motivation in most of the places to continue the pursuit, um, because look, no one wants to be the target of of the political wrath of a guy who has shown already that he will launch a <clears throat> excuse me that he will launch a terrorist attack on the U.S. Capitol. Would that lead to a constitutional crisis? We're already in one. We're, we have 65 percent of Americans don't believe or Republicans, excuse me, don't believe that Joe Biden was legitimately elected. We're in a constitutional crisis already. Um, we if we if we choose not to look at it that way, that's naivety, not not, you know, uh, reality. Rick Wilson, thank you very much. And let's talk soon again. Yes, ma'am. See ya.